An example of how this administration promotes its suspect climate agenda can be seen at the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration. Lamar Smith is chairman of the House Committee on Science, Space, and Technology. He's accusing scientists at NOAA, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, of making up evidence for continued planetary warming in recent decades. Its employees altered historical climate data to get politically correct results in an attempt to disprove the 18-year lack of global temperature increases. In 2016, debate about how fast the planet is warming faded as global temperatures spiked to levels that normally a restrained scientist called unprecedented, shocking, and frightening. In the face of the stunning jump in global temperatures, Representative Smith's calls to investigate scientists have an unreal, dreamlike quality. NOAA has refused to explain its findings and provide documents to this committee and the American people. The people have a right to see the data, evaluate it, and know the motivations behind this study. NOAA has provided the background, the analysis, the data, and pretty much everything that went into this paper. Uh, where they have drawn the line is turning over email and uh, other private correspondence. Lamar Smith is not trying to do a good faith inquiry here. He's trying to find some email where he can, that he can take out of context to hold up and show that, you know, that this study is bogus. Well, imagine if someone wanted to look at every email you wrote over weeks and months. It's easy to take things out of context. I think uh, the emphasis should be on the work, the results, and uh, what it says. It really all started when um, Joe Barton went after Michael Mann. Joe Barton is a Texas congressman who made headlines in 2010 following the catastrophic Gulf oil spill when he apologized to oil executives for congressional oversight and action on the disaster. But I apologize. In past decades, Barton has made a name for himself badgering government tobacco scientists and regulators. And as the FDA commissioner tries to regulate tobacco, he runs into enormous hostility. Excuse me, are you saying that the agency violated a court order here? Those efforts became a template for later harassment of climate scientists. A decade later, Barton was a leader in attacking climate research, the so-called hockey stick graph, which showed a sharp rise in global temperatures. Barton aimed his attack at leading paleoclimate researcher Michael Mann. Dr. Mann's findings have since been confirmed and replicated numerous times. He's one of, unfortunately, one of the uh, quote-unquote climate deniers in Congress. The Great Flood is an example of climate change. And that certainly wasn't because mankind had overdeveloped uh, hydrocarbon energy. And he said, no, this can't be true. Like, I, I don't believe the science here. And so he called them in for hearings and he conducted an investigation. And it didn't really go anywhere, except he wasted a lot of scientists' time and I think created kind of a, a culture of harassment. That harassment continued when emails were stolen from a British research unit in 2009. Distorted sentences and phrases were hyped by right-wing media as proving that climate scientists were engaged in deception. However, eight official investigations were unable to find any wrongdoing. They combed through thousands of emails looking for even just one little short phrase that they could use to try to attack climate scientists. It was discovered that they had some emails that were sent out saying and proving conclusively that they were cooking the science. The weirdest day of my whole life practically was the day I got a phone call from a reporter in Tulsa, Oklahoma who said to me, are you aware of the fact that Gen Senator James Inhofe is attacking you? You know, so in each of these cases, I've, uh, in the end, I've prevailed in these battles, uh, but it takes a lot of time and effort and legal support. But they can still create a media cycle by taking these clips out of context and claiming that they, sh they show something that they don't show. And he read to me from the speech that, um, this, that Inhofe was making, you know, and it was part of what we all are very familiar with now, that I was part of the uh, global conspiracy uh, the scientific conspiracy to bring down global capitalism. Obviously there are some people that want to use environmental regulations to try to control the economy or trying to control private property. Uh, uh, attacks on email, uh, hate phone calls, threatening phone calls. Now these things are familiar because we've, we've seen it. You know, I'm not the only person that's had these experiences. In recent years, fossil fuel funded groups have attempted to repeat the pattern of intimidating scientists by surveilling private communication. 
The group is trying to use open records laws to access 13 years of two Arizona climate scientists' emails, 26 years of records in total. They want to be able to review the emails for um, uncivil behavior. I mean, you, you can just see how this is totally inappropriate and is a tool of harassment. It's a huge waste of time. It's a waste of the scientists' time. It's a waste of the institution's time. It's a waste of the taxpayers' time. But um, because they're wasting time, they can divert resources away from actual scientific progress into defend, to scientists having to defend themselves against meritless investigations. I mean, it, it accomplishes a lot of objectives for them. To intimidate them, to try to send a message, to stop doing what you're doing, stop trying to communicate your research and the implications of your research to the public because it's a threat to, to the, the fossil fuel interests. Not content to inspect scientists' personal emails, Lamar Smith is also using his influence to put pressure on funding for the research itself. Unfortunately, climate alarmism often takes priority at NOAA. Instead of hyping a climate change agenda, NOAA should focus its efforts on producing sound science and improving methods of data collection. In addition to threatening NOAA funding, Smith is also taking aim at funding for an important sister agency. NASA, uh, which you all think of as being a space organization, uh, spends a lot of money um, researching climate change, uh, earth science they call it. Uh, we cut NASA's budget on earth science something close to 40 percent last week. And the, and NASA satellites are critical observing platforms often bringing uncomfortable climate truths to powerful interests. NASA's view from space helps us better understand the only home, so far as we know, that humans will ever have. But other powerful politicians are also threatening NASA's Earth observations. Almost any American would agree that the core function of NASA is to explore space. That's what inspires little boys and little girls across this country. Uh, I was on the Hill talking to members of Congress about how important these weather satellites were. And one member of uh, Congress said to me, Doctor, I don't need your weather satellites. I've got the Weather Channel. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, boy, do I need to take a few steps back and start <laughs> all over again. And, and you know that I am concerned that NASA, in the current environment, has l lost its full focus on that core mission. <laughs> now, if it's that hard to get weather instruments funded and weather satellites funded, it's a lot harder to get instruments, like climate instruments, on satellites. This is not a scientific debate. It's a political debate. But it's a political debate being made to look like a scientific debate being camouflaged as science, being dressed up like a scientific debate. And we now know why people do that, because it's a very, very effective strategy. Because if you can make people think it's a scientific debate, then people will think it's too soon to act.